सो हाई एवरी वन इन दिस वीडियो आई वुड बी डिस्कसिंग दी आंसर की फॉर द पेपर वन फ्रॉम क्वेश्चन नंबर वन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी सॉरी फॉर कीपिंग यू ऑल वेटिंग फॉर सो लॉन्ग नो लेट्स कंटिन्यू विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिले एंड बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आई वॉन्ट टू क्लियर वन थिंग इज नो मैटर योर क्वेश्चन आर राइट और रॉन्ग इन दिस पेपर एटलीस्ट यू शुड लिसन टू दिस सोल्यूशन सो दैट यू गेट एन आइडिया अबाउट दैट टॉपिक एंड सो दैट यू डोंट रिपीट दैट मिस्टेक इन द फ्यूचर अपकमिंग पेपर्स और एनी इट कैन दीज टॉपिक्स कैन कम इन एनी एग्जाम सो डो नॉट स्किप द वीडियो एंड प्लीज लर्न ऑल द सोल्यूशन फॉर द क्वेश्चन डो नॉट जस्ट सी द वीडियो जस्ट टू सी योर क्वेश्चन वॉज राइट और रॉन्ग लर्न फ्रॉम दीज टॉपिक्स सो लेट स्टार्ट द क्वेश्चन नंबर वन दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द पेशेंट इज एस ऑफ एच आई वी एंड इट हेज प्रेजेंटेड विद उडाइनोफेजिया एंड देर वर सर्पिंग जीनस अल्सर्स सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट सी एम बी ईस ऑफ एजाइटिस एंड इट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन जी आई टी मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ सी एम बी डिजीज द टिपिकल इज इट प्रेजेंट विद उडाइनोफेजिया डिस्फेजिया एंड इट कॉजेज सर्पिंग जीनस अल्सर्स सो द आंसर फॉर द क्वेश्चन नंबर वन इज सी एम बी ईस ऑफ एजाइटिस क्वेश्चन नंबर टू विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग पोस्ट गोनोकोगल यूथराइटिस इज करेक्ट फर्स्ट दे आर सिंग नाइसिरा गोनोरे इज द मोस्ट फ्रिक्वेंट कॉज नो इट्स एक्चुअली क्लेमाइडिया ट्रेकोमेटिस द थर्ड ऑप्शन इज राइट दैट कॉम्बिनेशन थेरेपी विथ अज इट थ्रो लीड्स टू रेजिस्टेंट एंड शुड बी अवॉइडेड थर्ड क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ट्रीटमेंट इज कंसिडर्ड एज अ गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड फॉर ब्रूसलोसिस इन अडल्स दैन इट इज एक्चुअली स्ट्रेप्टोमाइसिन इन डॉक्सीसाइक्लिन द ट्रीटमेंट फॉर ब्रूसलोसिस इज डॉक्सी जेंटा सो स्टेप्टोमाइसिन कम इन द फैमिली ऑफ द जेंटामाइसिन और डॉक्सी रिफेम्पिसिन अदर देन दैट यू कैन गिव इज सिप्रोफ्लॉक्स प्लस रिफेम्पिसिन सो मेनली डॉक्सीसाइक्लिन रिफेम्पिसिन और द जेंटामाइसिन दीज आर प्रेफर्ड फॉर दिस सो द आंसर फॉर दिस इज स्टेप्टोमाइसिन एंड डॉक्सीसाइक्लिन क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग हेज द हाइएस्ट रिस्क ऑफ एच आई वी ट्रांसमिशन आफ्टर सिंगल एक्सपोजर दैन एवरी वन नोज दैट इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन Question number fifth. Consider the following statement with regard to vitamin C. Then, when we talk about the vitamin C ascorbic acid, then the st one statement is that it is very easily destroyed by heat. Then it is not heat stable. Second, normal platelets are rich in ascorbic. Now let's see the statements. First, they are saying it is heat stable. Then it's wrong. It is actually heat labile. Normal platelets are poor in ascorbic. Just now we see that that normal platelets are rich in ascorbic. So this statement is also wrong. Perifollicular hyperkeratosis, the clinical signs are very. That's true. And in fact, fed, uh, fed on exclusively on boiled milk are vitamin C deficient. Then that is wrong. Next we have is which of the following statements are correct in respect of vitamin D? So when we talk about the vitamin D, then skin exposure to sunlight is the main source. Moving away from the equator, light decreases. So vitamin D is not synthesized in winter. the body store accumulated during the summer is consumed during the winter now let's see the options they are saying which are correct skin exposure is to sunlight is the main source that is true the uh, vitamin d synthesis decreases in winter as we move away from equator again right body store accumulated is again true deficiency of vitamin d causes distal muscle weakness there is no such criteria it causes distal it does not causes proximal there is nothing such like that so the 1 3 4 are correct in this In seventh, which of the following are used in the treatment of acne vulgaris? Then we all know benzoyl peroxide, clindamycin, and isotretinoin are used. So one, two, three are correct. Next question they are saying is which of the following is a cause of scarring alopecia? Actually, there are two types of causes for alopecia. One is non-scarring, other one is scarring. So the radiotherapy comes under the category of scarring, and they are asking which is the cause of scarring? Radiotherapy. Rest three comes under the category of non-scarring. Next we have is which of the following are used as the mood stabilizer for treatment of bipolar disorder the answer for this is valproic lamotrigine carbamazepine propofol is not used so it is given in this Next we have is an elderly alcoholic man who mainly eats a diet of maize and maize products presents with complain of chronic diarrhea severe sunburn like lesions delirium then what is the likely diagnosis and treatment when we talk about pellagra then it is happens mainly on people which who are directly on the consumption of maize and it is in alcoholics dermatitis like sunburn diarrhea and delirium and the treatment for this we all know answer is pellagra niacin therapy next is which of the following is an indication for self injectable adrenaline then we have this how to prescribe self injectable adrenal epinephrine then anaphylaxis So the answer for this is anaphylaxis to allergen that are difficult to avoid. 
Next we have is which of the following statement with regard to atriovenous fistula and dialysis patients are correct. Then hemodialysis we talk about then usually in the forearm up to a year before dialysis is contemplated and fistula causes distension and thickening of the vessel wall artery. Let us see the statement distension and thickening of vessel wall occurs that is true formed up to a year before dialysis is contemplated again true. Now they are saying synthetic graft may be fashioned between an artery and vein may be used for short term assess. Synthetic graft may be used if fistula formation is not possible again true then 1, 2 and 4 are true in this. Next they are saying it negative iron balance is the first stage in the progression to iron deficiency anemia which of the following laboratory investigation at this stage would be D R N C. There are stages of the iron deficiency first one is negative iron balance what happens is when demands for or losses of iron exceeds the body's ability to absorb iron then the deficient iron is made up by mobilization of iron from stores. So the serum ferritin and the iron stain on bone marrow aspiration decreased. Serum iron TIBC red cell protopowerfarin levels remains normal and the red cell morphology also remains normal. So in this case what happens in this stage bone marrow iron stores and serum ferritin these are derange in this stage while the total iron binding capacity remains normal. So 1, 2 and 3 are correct fourth is wrong. Which of the following drugs carry a definite risk causing hemolysis in patients suffering from G6PD deficiency? Then these are the drugs which causes hemolysis, antimalarials, analgesics, sulfonamides, then other than that antibiotics and others. All fours come under this category and all four causes hemolysis in the G6PD deficiency. Next is a 40 year old male presented with complaints of generalized weakness. See splenomegaly massive, hemoglobin is 7, platelet count is huge, WBC is also 90,000 so most probably it is a cause of. It is actually CML. What happens in CML is chronic myeloid leukemia, splenomegaly is the most common finding. Other than that hematology we see is leukocytosis ranging from 10,000 to 5 lakhs, thrombocytosis means platelet count increases and anemia in one third cases. So we have splenomegaly, we have thrombocytosis, we have WBC increased, so CML is the answer for this. In question 16 which of the following are the risk factors for type 2 diabetes mellitus we all know Obesity is the risk factor for type 2 diabetes mellitus not the underweight. So 1, 3 and 4 are true, second is wrong. Which of the following statement with regard to gestational diabetes mellitus are correct? Then most women revert to normal glucose tolerance postpartum that is true. Children born to a GDM mother have no increased risk of diabetes mellitus, we all know they have the increased risk of diabetes mellitus. So this no is wrong and we have to find out the correct statement then 2 is ruled out so 1 3 4 becomes the right statement. Next is a thyroid function report shows the following results which is the likely interpretation. They are saying T3 and T4 are raised while the TSH is undetectable. Here in the case of primary thyrotoxicosis TSH is undetectable while T4 T3 are raised. So answer for this is primary thyrotoxicosis. Next, which of the following biochemical abnormalities seen in severe hypertriglyceridemia then the answer is pseudohyponatremia. Pseudohyponatremia we have hyperlipidemia, so answer for this is this. In question 20, which of the following statement are correct about treatment with vitamin D supplement? See when we talk about vitamin D supplement, vitamin D should always be repleted in conjunction with calcium supplementation because most of the consequences of vitamin D deficiency are result of this. Other statement is normal calcemia is usually observed within one week of the therapy by although increase in PTH and alkaline phosphatase may persist that means the calcium levels becomes normal first as compared to the PTH and alkaline phosphatase level. The third statement is when you have to monitor the treatment or the vitamin D deficiency is resolved or not you will monitor the serum and the urinary calcium in the patient. Fourth it can lead to the nephrolithiasis that treatment. Now let us come to the statement serum calcium improve earlier than serum PTH that is true. Patient should be closely observed with serial vitamin D level no we would observe the serum and urinary calcium level. Vitamin D supplementation conjunction with calcium that is true and nephrolithiasis is a common complication that is true. 
Next come to the next question 21. The first line investigation for the diagnostic evaluation of patient with hypercalcemia. Then we go for the measurement of PTH in this. So, the answer for this is serum PTH level. In question 22, consider following conditions. Now, which of the above are causes of lymphadenopathy in HIV positive patient? Then all four are true. Persistent generalized lymphadenopathy or because of malignancy like Kaposi sarcoma, lymphoma or because of infections usually TB. All four are true. So, 1, 2 and 3, 4. In 23, a patient receiving chemotherapy develops neutropenia. He presents with these features and CT scan shows hello sign and the Christian sign. Drug for treatment. First, let us diagnose what the case they are talking about. Then it is actually aspergillosis because in aspergillosis, we have neutropenia and we have hello sign, crescent sign. So, the treatment for this is voriconazole. In 24, a patient undergoes splenectomy after an accident. Now, he requires oral prophylaxis again which of the following organism. After the splenectomy, this we capsular the streptococcus pneumonia, the chance of getting infection by this is increases. So, we prefer treatment against, uh, we uh, try to you know, give oral prophylaxis against the capsular organism that is streptococcus pneumonia. Next, feeding methods are very important in the baby. If the baby is born after the 34 weeks, then we initiate the breastfeeding and we check the positioning attachment and if the baby is able to suck effectively and long enough or not. If it is able to do these both things, then yes, we initiate the breastfeeding. But if he is unable to do that, he is unable to maintain that sucking for the long for 10 to 15 minutes, then we go towards the by feeding by spoon or peladi. And if the baby is born between 32 to 34 weeks, then also we start feeding by spoon and observe whether he is uh, accepting it without spilling you know, or he is able to accept adequate amount. If he is able to do that, then we prefer spoon or peladi feeding. But if he spits out, he start coughing, then we feed by orogastric or nasogastric tube. Or if the baby is born between 28 to 31 weeks, then also we prefer orogastric or nasogastric tube. See, observe if vomiting or abdominal distension occurs. If it happens, then we switch to the guest, uh, start IV fluid and if the baby is born in less than 28 weeks, then also we start IV fluids. So, here in the question, we have 30 weeks. 30 weeks come under the range of orogastric or nasogastric feeding. IV fluids is done only when it is less than 28 weeks. Now, the you all can, can confuse our question like low birth weight infant started on IV fluid, but before that it is written term. Term means between 37 to 42 weeks. If the baby is term and he is low birth infant, then we start on the IV fluid. So, the answer for this is orogastric feeding. Next they are saying is newborn delivered 32 week and start on spoon feed, but some spilling and coughing, then we have to switch from the spoon to the orogastric or nasogastric tube feeding as we have seen. So, the answer for this is orogastric. In 27, they are saying a child speaks bisyllables like ma ba and he is able to sit without support and looks at the source of sound diagonally, he is likely ages. See, first of all, he is able to sit without support, he has crossed 8 months. Another thing is he is able to see ma ba, so he is 9 months. Next thing is he is by the age of 10 months, the child directly look at the source of sound diagonally, then the answer becomes 10 months for this. In 28, after sustaining a head injury, an 18 month old child displays eye opening only to pain. So, we have to Glasgow coma score, uh, coma scale, then withdraw to pain is 4, moaning to pain is 2 and eye opening to pain is 2. So, the score becomes 8 in this. In 29, which of the following are the reversible causes of electromechanical dissociation seen in pulseless electrical activity? So, these are the reversible causes all hypo, hypovolumia, hypoxia, hydrogen ion, hypoglycemia, hypokalemia, hypothermia. So, all hypo, so hyper statement becomes wrong, it should be actually hypo. So, 1, 2 and 4 are true in this. In question number 30, a 3 day old newborn presents with jaundice since birth. Now, examination reveals pilar and hepatosplenomegaly. The newborn also has a cephal hematoma. Now, which of the following is the most important indicator to the diagnosis of pathologic jaundice? So, the earliest to diagnose is it appears within the 24 hours. So, clinical jaundice since birth becomes the most important indicator to diagnosis of pathologic jaundice. 
what is the diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder primarily based upon and it is based upon the clinical criteria only. According to national AIDS control program which of the following drug is given to newborns born to HIV positive mother to prevent mother to child transmission then the answer for this is nevirapine. In question 33 we have which of the following statement is correct in contest of human breast milk. Then if we talk about the human breast milk then lactose is in high concentration 6 to 7, it is low in protein while human contains taurine and cysteine. Let us see concentration of lactose is 5, no it is actually 6 to 7, protein content is higher, no it is low. Human milk does not contain taurine cysteine that is wrong it contains, human milk contains omega 2 and omega 6 that is true. So, the answer for this is fourth. In 34 question which of the following are age appropriate language milestones in a normally developing 2 year old child. Then in a rapidly developing 2 year old child 1, 2 and 3 are correct. Why stating his name when asked is wrong because it comes when he becomes 3 year. Which of the following tools are used for developmental screening? Then we have Denver ages stages parents. Why not Bailey scale for infant and toddler development? because that comes under the scales for definitive testing of intellect and neurodevelopment while these uh, parents evaluation and ages stages questionnaires come under the developmental surveillance. In question 36 according to the King's College criteria which of the following are the indicators for referring to liver transplantation following the acetaminophen toxicity. Then King's college criteria for of when toxicity are used first is acidemia like serum pH should be less than 7.3, coagulopathy INR should be more than 6, renal dysfunction creatinine should be more than 3.4 and grade 3 or 4 hepatic encephalopathy. Let us see what the statement says in this transamine is more than 4000 no it is not then the these criteria acidemia is there, coagulopathy is there and renal dysfunction is there. So, 2, 3 and 4 are true for this. In question number 37, as per the gel and Coombs classification, farmer lung in which type of hypersensitivity? Then farmer lungs come under the type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Question number 38, hormone regulation of salt and water balance in nephrons occurs we all know at the level of DCT. In question 39, they are saying which of the following parameters suggest pre-renal azotemia? Then in pre-renal azotemia, fractional excretion of sodium is less than 1 percent and the pre renal urine sediment is usually normal or has hyaline and granular cast while the sediment of acute tubular necrosis has the cellular debris, tubular epithelial cast and dark muddy brown granular cast. So, we have renal tubular epithelial cell cast no, glomerular no, fractional excretion more than 1 no, it is less than 1 so the answer becomes hyaline cast in urine sediment. The last question for this discussion is most common cause of chronic kidney disease is then the most common cause is diabetic nephropathy. So, the answer for this is diabetic nephropathy. I hope you all find this uh, video useful and helpful. So, please go through the solution which I have provided you just not see whether the question is right or wrong of yours just learn from your mistakes. So, all the best let us see you in the other part of this video.